Hi everyone, so I'm going to be showing you how to build a Magic 8-Ball app with MIT App Inventor. So this is what the final app is going to look like. You'll be able to ask your app a question and you'll get an answer. So for example, I'm going to type in, will people like this video? And it says, yep, yay! And the answer changes every time, so now I'm going to ask, will it rain today? And the answer is no. So first, when we get to the main App Inventor page, we're going to click this Create Apps button. And that's going to take us to the page with all of our projects. Also, we're going to get this little pop-up window that you could just click Continue on. So now we're going to click on Start New Project. And you can name it whatever you want to, as long as it does not have spaces. And once you click enter, it will take a few seconds, but App Inventor will eventually open the code. All right, so there are two main components to App Inventor. There's the designer panel and the blocks panel. And the designer panel lets us design the user interface. So we get to choose whether we have things like buttons or images or stuff like that. And the blocks panel lets us do the actual coding. So we're going to stick on the designer panel first, and we're, the first thing we're going to add is a label. And that label is going to tell the user to enter in the question that they want our Magic 8-Ball to answer. And right now our label just says text for label 1, and we want to change that. So let's look over on the right here under properties. This tells us all the different things we can change about our label. For example, we can change the background color, so I'm going to make it magenta. And we can change the font size, so you can make it like a little bit bigger. There's a whole bunch of stuff. But the most important thing is the text. Because we want to change the text to say, enter your question. And you'll see that when you click away, it updates. So we now have enter your question. Cool. So now we need a place for the user to actually put in their question. And to do that, we're going to need a text box. So you'll see there's a text box right here and you're going to drag and drop that onto your screen. And the last thing we need is a button so that the user can tell the app when they're ready to get their fortune. And right up at the top here is a button. So we can drag and drop that. But we want to change the text to say something other than text for button 1. So again, we can look under properties and down at the bottom here is where we can change the text. I'm going to make it say, get your fortune. Cool. Now what we need to do is add another screen because what we want to do when the user clicks the button is open up the new screen that's going to show them the fortune. So to do that, we're going to click the Add Screen button up here. And I'm going to name my screen Fortune. All right, so now let's get to the code. So it switches over to Fortune, but we're going to switch back to screen 1 and click on Blocks. So we're now in the blocks panel for our main screen. So what we want to do is once the user clicks that button saying they're ready to get their fortune, we put them onto the fortune screen. So if you go over to the left, you'll see we have this button one part underneath screen one. And if you click on that, the first thing we have is when button one dot click. Button one is the name of the button that we put on our screen. So that sounds pretty cool because we want to be able to do something when the user clicks the button. Now, if you go under control in the built-in blocks and scroll all the way around the middle, you'll see something that says open another screen, screen name. And you're going to drag and drop that and fit it in inside this when button one dot click block. And what that's going to do is once the user clicks the button, it's going to open another screen. But the reason it says screen name and there's this little hook here is because we have to tell it what screen it's going to open. If this is a complicated app with multiple screens, the app isn't going to know which screen it wants to open. So we need to tell it. So we need to put something right here to tell it which screen to open. Luckily enough, there's this kind of block called text. And if we scroll to the top here, we have these little empty quotation marks. And if we drag and drop that, we can now put whatever we want to into these quotes. And that will tell it which screen to open. So because I called my screen Fortune, 
I'm going to type in fortune. So now when the user clicks the button, the app's going to go, hey, cool, this thing happened. Now let's go inside of here and it's going to open the screen fortune. All right, so now we're done here. Now we're going to go over to the fortune screen. So we're going to switch this up here to fortune. And first we're going to go to the designer panel. Now I want my fortune screen to have three main things. I want it to have one label that says something along the lines of here is your fortune. I want another label that actually says the fortune and I want a back button so that the user can go back to the previous screen once they've received their fortune. So just like we used labels on the other screen, we're going to drag and drop a label here. And instead of it saying text for label one, I'm going to change it to your fortune. And just for added effect, I'm going to change my text color to magenta. Cool. So now I'm going to get another label and this is the label that's eventually going to have the fortune. Now, we don't know what the fortune is yet. It's going to change every time. So we can't just put in an answer for the text. Like we can't just put in yes, because then every single time the user is going to get yes as their answer. And that's not going to be very fun. So for now, we're going to leave it blank. And actually in the blocks panel, we'll get to change what it says. Now we're going to get our button lastly, so that the user can go back to the previous page once they're done. And I'm going to make my button say back. Cool, so now we're done with the user interface. Let's go to the blocks panel. So we need to show the fortune as soon as the user gets on the screen. And there's a cool block for that. So if you click on fortune, this represents our screen. There's something called when fortune.initialize. And initialize just means when we open the screen. So as, we, as soon as we open the screen, we're going to do something. And that's what we want because as soon as the user gets to the fortune screen, we want to show them their fortune. Now we need to be able to randomly pick which fortune we want to give our users. So sometimes we'll want to say yes, sometimes no, and sometimes maybe. The way we're going to choose which one to show is we're going to keep all of the possible fortunes in a list. And a list is just a nice way of organizing things that are kind of similar so that we can group them together. And you'll see under blocks, there's actually a category called lists. So if you click on that, you'll see there's something called make a list. And that sounds like what we want to do. So go ahead and click and drag make a list. Now you'll see that there are these little puzzle piece slots on the right here. And that lets us put in the different elements of the list. And we're going to do that again with text, just like we used it before. We're going to take this little empty quotes thing and stick it in here. And now whatever we put in inside of this text screen is going to be added to our list. So I'm going to make one of my fortunes. Yep. We can go get as many as you want to. So I'm going to get another one here and put no. But we can actually have more than two. If you click on this little spinny thing and you click and drag item into here, you'll see that opened up another puzzle piece. So it lets us put in another element of our list. So I'm going to add one more, which is can't tell. Now we aren't quite done yet because we are going to make this list and then later we're going to use it to randomly select an item out of it. And to make sure that we can use the same list, we have to give our list a name so that we know that we're referencing the right one. Just like we had to give our screen a name so we can make sure we're opening the right screen, we need to give our list a name so we can make sure that we're picking the right the we're picking an element from the right list. So this time we're actually going to do something called assigning it to a variable. And a variable is just a nice way of naming an item so that you can refer to it later. Now you'll see there's actually something called variables under our blocks categories. So if you click on that, there's something called initialize global name too. And that just means we're going to create this variable and it can be used anywhere on this screen. So go ahead and click and drag that over here. Now the reason why the name box is a slightly lighter color is because you can actually change this. So whatever we put in here is going to be the name of our list. And I'm going to make that fortunes. 
So now we have this list that contains all of our fortunes and it's called fortunes. So how do I use that later on? Well, if you mouse over fortunes, you'll actually see something called get global fortunes. And that's going to let us use that list after we defined it. So now we have this get global fortunes. What do we want to do with that? Well, we want to randomly pick something out of our list of fortunes, right? So sometimes it's yep, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's can't tell. That's going to make us want to use another block under lists. If you click lists and scroll down, you'll see there's something called pick a random item list. And that's gonna let us, as it seems, pick a random item out of a list. So let's pull this down. And the reason there's this little piece right here is because we need to tell it what list we're picking a random item from. This is where naming our lists comes in really handy. So now we can just connect those two blocks, but we aren't quite done yet. So we've picked a random item out of our list. What do we want to do with it? Well, if you'll recall, we had that label that we put on the screen that we didn't put anything in it yet. Now, this random item that we're picking is what we want to put on that label. So that label was called label two, and you'll see it over here in blocks. So if you click on label two, you'll see something called set label two dot text. And that's what we want to do. We want this to set the text inside of label two to our random item. So you're going to click and drag that and pull under. Awesome. So now we've picked a random item from our list of fortunes and we've displayed it on the screen and you can go ahead and test that if you like. But we have one more thing we need to do and that's to make sure our back button actually does something. App Inventor doesn't know that just because we made our, our button say back that it actually takes us back. We need to tell them what to do when the user presses that button. So you'll remember before on the previous screen we used something called whenButton.click and that's going to come in handy again because again we want to respond when the user clicks our button. So you're going to click on button 1 over here and at the top there's our whenButton1.click. So you're going to drag that onto the screen. Now we need to tell it what to do when we click the button. And what we want to do is we want to open up our old screen. Just as we opened our fortune screen last time when the user clicked the button, this time we're going to open up our old screen. So to do that, you're going to go under control. And towards the bottom, there's something that says open another screen screen name. So go ahead and put that there. And just like before, we're going to need a text block to be able to tell it what our screen name is. And I believe if you click up here, you can see that our other screen is called screen one. Make sure that your S is capitalized. So we're gonna type that in there. Awesome, so now you can test that out and it should work. But it would be cool if instead of pressing a button for the user to get their fortune, they could actually shake it like an actual magic eight ball. So let's change that. So we're gonna go back to screen one and we're going to go back to the designer panel. So now what we wanna do is have a way to detect when the user is shaking their phone. And to do that, we're gonna need something called the accelerometer sensor. So if you look on the left here, underneath sensors, at the very top, there's accelerometer sensor. And you're gonna drag and drop that onto your screen. You'll see it goes under non-visible components because it's not a visible aspect of the user interface. So now we are good and we can go back to blocks. So if we go to blocks and we click on accelerometer sensor one, cool, right up at the top, there's one accelerometer one dot shaking. That sounds like exactly what we wanna do. So let's pull that down. And we don't need this one button one dot click anymore because we aren't using the button. So instead, we're just gonna drag this old part into our new when clause. And so now when the user shakes their phone, we're going to open up our fortune screen. And we don't need this when button one dot click anymore and it's just gonna confuse the computer. So let's drag it into our trash can. Awesome, so there's one more thing we need to do. We need to get rid of our button so it doesn't appear on the screen. So let's go to the designer panel. Now to get rid of our button, all you have to do is click on button one 
and then click on delete and just say okay. Now we're done. So if you want to test out the app, what you're going to do is click connect up here, click AI companion, and if you have the MIT App Inventor 2 app on your phone, you'll be able to either scan the barcode or put in the code.